Good morning. Hi. Morning. I'm going to actually try to share my screen this time. Still not working. Maybe another time you can help me with that, Bob. I checked my Is settings before. Okay, you might be able to do it just um, share tab in Chrome if you join via web. That's all I have to do on Linux. Um, if you want to do that, but. Yeah, let's not worry about it yeah. today or right now. We have a lot to cover. And we have two tags that are presenting updates. So. Yeah. Okay, hey, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Alalita. Hi. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, Bob, do you mind helping drive the... Yep, yep, yep. I'm pulling up the issue and everything now. Okay, thank you. You'll see I tried like half an hour ago, but... Welcome tag observability and tag runtime. Thank you for joining. We're looking forward to your updates. Hi, how's it going? Hmm. Okay, so first we need to kick it off with the, the usual. Yes, thank you. Um, Welcome, everybody. It is Tuesday, October 1st, um, our first TOC meeting of feels like fall. Um, so welcome. And as usual, we follow the um, general code of conduct. Um, everybody be nice, um, treat each other well. And if you don't want to be on camera, please uh, turn your camera off because this is being recorded. And um, do you want to show the next one? We need to show the antitrust yep. policy. Perfect. So again, general antitrust policy. Thank you. And now we will go to our agenda. We have a long agenda today. One moment, need to switch. No. Eventually, we'll figure out how you don't have to switch between that. Thank you. Um, so, TOC members, is there anybody that would like to volunteer for notes? Please go ahead and jump in. But we'll start off with um, reviewing the current open votes. So if you haven't voted, please vote. It looks like there aren't any votes open right now. At least linked was the uh, sandbox yep. repo. So there, there's okay. no votes open in sandbox or TOC. So we are good there. Perfect. And another journal reoccurring item is reviewing and assigning projects and then moving levels backlog. Uh, do you, so do, um, do you want to like save that after the, the tags present? Because there'll probably be more discussion around some of those. Um, we can. I was trying to get through some so that uh, okay. we didn't rush the tags. Okay. But reminder, we'll, okay. we'll move to the end. But reminder, everybody, please uh, update all of your, if you're assigned, Anything in the moving levels backlog, please update. We're getting close to KubeCon review freeze date. So I do want to get through those before we get to the tag updates, if that's okay with uh, Emily and Nikita as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you just want to run through the, the list? Let's go ahead and run through the list really fast. Okay. Um, okay. Open cost. Uh, Ricardo, are you here? Yes. So I'm. I'm just about to share in the 
in the TOC channel, the two documents for the end user interviews and uh, and uh, the due diligence. Um, I managed to do one more end user interview last week because there were some questions uh, that came from the previous ones. And I, I took me a while to find an extra end user that I found it last week. But I'll share it today. And I think uh, if uh, the TOC agrees, we can open public comment in the next couple of days. Right. Thank you, Ricardo. Awesome. All right, uh, Dapper. Dapper? Uh, Karina, you have more information than me now, <laughs> so please go ahead. Um, so Dapper, we're in due diligence. Um, we'll have the adopter interviews finalized this week, as well as uh, thank you to Linux staff, Linux Foundation staff, for helping with the governance review. And Tag App Delivery will have their uh, review this week as well. So thank you for Tag App Delivery for working on that, specifically Sarah. So it's awesome. And thank you, Leon, for, I know um, she's going to have you all review it. So again, thank you to the Tag. Yeah, one thing to call out here is we won't make it uh, to the deadline uh, before, um, uh, you know, the freeze. For for Dapper. Dapper? Yeah. Is so that when exactly is the freeze? Uh, essentially, we would need public comment to start before uh, next Friday. Next Friday. Okay. We might be able to squeeze it then. We'll see. We'll, we'll try very hard. <laughs> we'll see. Hi. Can I ask a quick question? I remember a while back, we kind of changed the freeze to be two weeks before KubeCon. So, I, so if it's, I'm trying to understand, you said public comment uh, next Tuesday. Is it because you think the public comment could take two weeks? So if we add two weeks to the public comment, which is about two weeks before KubeCon, is that the right way to think about it? Emily, I saw you have a hand. I actually just posted this in the TOC channel. So we did change the freeze to accommodate um, the some of the changes that we've made to the process. Within four weeks of the event, which uh, Bob, correct my timeline and calendaring, I believe is next Friday, we don't take on sponsoring new applications to move level because we're all busy and we really need to start closing out the current projects that we have assigned to us. Um, we don't open public comment periods within four weeks of the event, but I'd like to propose a change to the TOC to move that down into the, uh, the two-week window before KubeCon. I know it adds another heading in our FAQs, but I think it'll be fine because we can talk about it at KubeCon. People can come up and discuss it with us. Um, we don't open voting for projects because it gets lost in all the noise of KubeCon notices, notifications, prep for talks, things like that. Open voting can still occur Occur, but TOC members are not required to vote during that time frame window. Um, we definitely don't do project announcements. KubeCon is going on. Even if a project has passed a vote, if it's not beneficially announced to move levels, they're not included as an incubating or graduated project. And those timelines are set by uh, event staff based off of what their um, time frame is to be able to get all the marketing and PR and all of that that has to occur. Um, second week after KubeCon is where things start to open back up. So that is the current time frame. It's on the TOC uh, repo underneath of process where it says KubeCon Cloud Native Con Freeze. So we're, we've got a hopefully a uh, proposed change that'll get merged in at some point soon. But for right now, I think uh, TOC members, if you are currently assigned, try to see what's possible to be done before next Friday so that we can get these projects moving forward. We might have some leeway and some grace afforded to us depending on how active we all are. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. Thank you. All right, so let's get through these really quickly. Dragonfly. Uh, Nikita, are you here? Um, so for Dragonfly, uh, we went through the adopter interviews. There's some question on uh, governance. Um, we are working through that. Um, CubeFS. Uh, Kevin's on uh, vacation. Oh, he's on CTO. Okay. Um, I know he, that one's actively in due diligence. He did share that with TOC. Um, Kaiverno. Yep. Um, I think we're in a pretty good place as far as the adopter interviews we're doing right now. I think we've just been digging through 
uh, some of the governance review, things like that. And we'll have, uh, I should have an update there pretty soon. Thank you, Dave. Okay. And then open your, Ricardo. Yep. So I have four interviews done. I'm having trouble finding a fifth one. Uh, should I just go ahead with the four? The rest of the process is pretty much done. Emily gives the thumbs up. So yes. Yep. Cool. Good. Um, and Toto. Uh, yeah, I just uh, posted an update today. So I've been talking to San Diego um, this week. I think the DD is mostly done. There are some things I still need the project to clarify. So he said he'll finish up this week. Um, the first interview has already been finished. Um, the second interview, I just got the name. So I've reached out to schedule the interview. The third interview, I think he identified a person but hasn't had a chance to send out the email to introduce me to that person. Uh, it's moving along, but I think given the freeze with KubeCon, it's going to be really, really uh, tight and almost impossible for KubeCon. Um, I would say probably towards the end of the year is probably more realistic uh, given the KubeCon freeze. Thank you, Lynn. Yeah. Uh, Cubescape, Emily? So I got the last, hopefully, uh, doctor interview scheduled. It is for October 21st. I do still need to add it to the TOC calendar. My goal is to wrap up the due diligence at the time that that adopter interview is complete. So hopefully in November, it will be open for public comment after some TOC review. Um, but all depends. I'm still going through the due diligence. I've been overrun with a variety of work projects, so I apologize for the delay on that project. But the issue should be up to date on the repo. Thank you, Emily. Um, Wasm Cloud, uh, Duffy, are you here? I think he said he can join. Okay. Um, and that is the last for the ones that are in, unless there's currently assigned yeah so those are the ones currently assigned thank you everyone um moving on are there any other questions about the kubecon review freeze date before we move forward okay and thank you emily for that explanation it helps okay so quickly tag state of the ecosystem reports a uh, reminder to send drafts to your TOC liaisons for review. Um, we set this week as a quick checkpoint. Are there any tags here that feel they won't have a report ready by November 1st? And are there any questions about the state of the ecosystem reports? Karina, uh, there are a couple uh, that I had um, from the observability side. We have started, uh, you know, to kind of uh, work on a draft uh, in the tag. Um, but um, I want to kind of understand how much detail uh, and what kind of, a, uh, you know, how much, how much verification we need to make uh, before submitting this report. Um, is there a some kind of a template or an example that we could leverage? Um, there should have been, as part of the issue that was filed with you, um, what uh, content was expected. Um, yes. I think. I think we yeah. left it kind of open ended as to the level of detail because we were looking more for. Um, uh, we didn't want anything that was a book and a half. We were right, looking for right. something that was a little <laughs> bit shorter um, and more uh, to the point. Um, so we don't have a template necessarily, just more of the outline of the areas that we want to okay. see covered. Yeah, down. I mean, so I it, saw that. Yeah. If you want to just use that as your template, feel free. Let's go okay. for that. Um, we're we're kind of like figuring out how to do this and manage this more effectively moving forward. This is our first attempt at doing it. So any recommendations or feedback you have on the process as you go through it would be greatly okay. appreciated. Sure, Emily. That's that's did, cool. Did I answer all of your questions? 
Uh, yes, um, you know, uh, again, I think you've uh, left some artistic license for the tags. So therefore, it's all creative good. people. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, uh, comment about that. So uh, I think the level of detail uh, might vary uh, between the different working groups. Uh, so it all depends on how... I mean, we're going to, in tag runtime, we're going to provide the template or, or the prompting questions to the working group, but, it, but we're also leaving it up to the working group to provide that level of detail, right? And yeah, so in, in, in that might actually be different for each working group. I think that's fine. It, we're we're still learning about this that I'm expecting some working groups to have significantly more content than others. It's just more making sure that we keep it um, within the, I believe we said working groups, we were targeting maybe a paragraph tops for them. Um, Cause what we don't want to do is have one spend a significant amount of time providing content updates and another one only doing like one or two sentences. We're looking just for full paragraph, what's going on, how are things happening? Um, where they see the state of that working group within the ecosystem or that subdomain or topic area um, within the ecosystem kind of moving forward. So we're expecting Sounds variability. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I expect the AI working group is probably looking at more than that, which is, yeah. yeah they'll have a lot of updates. We'll try to keep it short. <laughs> okay, so quickly, the let's look at the tag updates index, and then we're going to go ahead and ask our tags that are here to give your updates. So a quick review. We have tag observability and runtime today. And for we look at the calendar. If you go back, oh, sorry. To the tab, so just a reminder for other tags, um, if you're looking for when your update is coming up, go ahead and review the this document. And uh, next up are going to be security and storage after this one. So the next tag updates. Okay, so Alalita. Love to hear from Tag Observability, and I will hand it over to you or who from Tag Observability is giving the update. Yeah, and Matt and I are both going to are here, so we will both uh, cover different sections. Uh, again, I think we if we can pull up the doc, um, Karina, where we have added uh, some of the highlights. I I made you a co-host, so you can. You can share if you have it open, or if you have a if you can drop a link, I can also do it there. Matt, do you have a link? Let me find it. Otherwise, oh, here's a link. Yeah. Oh, did you get it? Yeah. It's yep. in the Give me one moment. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Rob. Um, again, hi, everyone. And um, Matt and I are both joined today. Very um, uh, thrilled to be actually giving an update uh, after a long time. Uh, so let's start off with health uh, of the tag. And uh, one of the things, again, you know, the tag has been very pretty active, but I would say that it has also been a small community that, that participates regularly. Uh, and there are a lot of folks, you know, especially end users who are starting to participate um, a fair bit in the in the tag uh, where they are actually choosing to join in uh, most of the time and um, maintaining more momentum uh, that we are seeing uh, towards the later half of the year. Um, I think we started off on a good note. So. We are looking. We have been looking for co-chairs um, so that you know we can actually uh, split um, and share responsibilities and also grow momentum. So Chris Larson, who is one of very active uh, tag members in observability, 
he has been leading the uh, query language specification work group uh, for the last uh, year plus. Uh, he um, was interested in, you know, when we reached out to different folks again and confirmed interest to be a co-chair. So we will be, um, again, I think it'll be great to have him. Uh, he is also based on the West Coast um, and we are in the process of submitting a profile as well as, um, you know, open source participation for the community uh, to review. Um, I think we need to understand a bit better uh, what the process now is for uh, the co-chair um, elections or nominations, because I, I did see a TOC issue where um, I think there was a discussion of elections for tag chairs. Um, so I, I will follow up with um, Bob perhaps and, you know, kind of figure out what the process is now. Um, and also on the technical lead, again, we are always, uh, we have one active technical lead today, uh, Bartek uh, from Plotka from Google. Uh, and again, typically he's uh, been very helpful. But we also need other uh, technical leads, and it's a great opportunity for more engineers to get get involved in the uh, tag. So uh, we are in the process of re uh, chatting with a couple of candidates. We haven't, um, but related to both of these areas, we have had an open issue for a while in terms of defining roles and responsibilities and the amount of time that people need to um, spend uh, in order to be active uh, and supporting the tag um, and the TOC requests, right? So that is something that we are discussing in the tag. Um, Matt, did you want to add anything else to it? I think, you know, again, any guidance from the TOC on roles and just responsibilities overall for technical leads as well as co-chairs would be super useful. Um, and and uh, again, uh, the other two items, we do maintain a Kanban board uh, for the tag where we do have, uh, you know, we track all the areas of work that we are looking at, uh, as well as we have all our issues actively tagged. We've done white papers in the past. And again, there are a couple of actually very interesting areas of uh, white papers that are being discussed right now. So, um, you know, as a fast forward into future activity, there's a lot lot of interesting work that actually will pick up momentum. There are a lot of interest from end users also uh, in, in working in those spaces. So that's about health. Any questions? Okay, um, let's move on. And again, oh, sorry, Emily, go ahead. Uh, less a question and just a more uh, point that might help out the tag or other tags. Um, there is the leadership uh, terms and ladder issue yes. that's on the TOC repo. Um, mm -hmm. Nikita and Lynn and a few others have been working on that. Um, mm -hmm. We're hoping to get that kind of roughed in and, and close to finalization before KubeCon is ideally our target. <laughs> so at the very least, it should help provide kind of some of those areas of like roles, responsibilities, expectations, trying to get a lot of that cleaned up so that we have a little bit more consistency and understanding amongst contributors that are interested in stepping into those roles. So mm -hmm. hopefully once that's done, it will assist you all. Um, but if you aren't aware or involved in that group, um, check out the issue. I, I fail to have it in front of me at this point in time, but I will find it and I will drop it in chat, um, particularly if there is prior art that you have done as a tag that you want to see reflected within that, looping that in, making sure that it's there, I think will be beneficial. Okay, awesome, Emily. I mean, I have been tracking the issue, but uh, we also have done some work in parallel uh, specific to the observability space. So um, definitely we'll add uh, feedback for sure. Thank you. Thank you for the link. Karina. Um, moving on, um, I think, uh, Matt, did you want to cover the next section on contributor activity? Sure. Um, so over the year, we've had uh, an uptick for us uh, in end user activity uh, and some really vibrant discussions. We regularly have um, uh, maintainers of core observability projects such as Jaeger and OpenSearch uh, showing up at our meetings and showing off the new versions. 
Uh, for example, Jaeger got a UI revamp a month or two ago. Um, uh, and some of the conversations that come out of that have been stimulating, um, you know, nuanced discussions from from folks that understand the full the full uh, 360, you know, not just the technical aspects of the projects, but what makes or breaks them in the marketplace of ideas. Uh, so I'm really happy to see that. Uh, that said, that uptick is, you know, I, I want to say uh, still um, it's a it's a small niche set and we'd like to broaden uh, you know, the demographics of the folks that are showing up. So I think we see KubeCon as an opportunity to raise some awareness there. Um, yeah, one of the other things I think, Matt, I just wanted to add here is that you're also seeing a lot of interest from end users, you know, wanting to present some of their use cases. And I think this is also, um, you know, amplified by uh, the end user tab uh, as the end user tab, you know, in parallel works on reference architectures as a work group. Again, uh, that dovetails well into being able to leverage that also in the tabs uh, and the tags um, work on observability specifically, you know, where a work done by large enterprises or other uh, end users actually uh, as can be reflected as use cases. So uh, why I mention that is because folks are interested in uh, presenting on their use cases and how they have leveraged uh, and what are some of the gaps uh, that they have plugged in, if you will, in, in, in the landscape. Uh, if you were to use a completely open source, you know, uh, CNCF observability landscape uh, model. For sure. Uh, uh, but I just saw Bob's message. I, I'm not actually familiar with Pavilion directly. Uh, Alina may be, but... Whatever. Yeah, Bob, I have looked at that. Um, we are familiar with it, but uh, kind of thought that was more applicable to projects, but... Um... It, it, it is open to, to tags as well, and um, it was wildly successful at Paris. Uh, George, if you are on this and paying attention, uh, feel free to come off mute and chime in. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> we'll take a look. Oh, <laughs> he says, I'm here one sec. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he's been the primary organizer for it. Um, but yeah, like just as a quick TLDR until he comes off mute, like um, it was amazing at the amount of engagement in people um coming into that area at paris uh actually good i thing. think that's, that's great that's really good to know did someone Hope say so. project pavilion <laughs> <laughs> so what we're uh i'll give 30 seconds for salt lake city we've got a live stage for the projects as well so they're going to have their booths in the typical area and i i can't share the map yet but the map it's centrally located uh, like it was last time and there's going to be a stage and we got the audio all figured out. So the tours and stuff will be more localized and it won't be such a hot mess. Um, but we're planning on having lightning talks from the projects, a little bit of unconference. People will sign up. We have two huge 85 inch TVs in the back. They'll be able to put that content on there and we'll have, we'll run the project slides on there. Uh, you know, those videos that all the uh, projects Bumpers. do. Yeah. We'll, we'll like play those on a loop on the digital signage. We got, all sorts awesome. of stuff. We're bringing in a uh, company that's going to teach maintainers how to do prior art. So oh, we can, cool. um, do training on stopping patent trolls. Um, uh, we got a whole what, bunch of stuff. Sorry. What, opportunity, <laughs> what opportunities are there for, you know, tags to potentially get involved in? Yes. So uh, the tags, some of them have booths in the, um, in the pavilion. Uh, I know there's some on the schedule, but that deadline has passed. But generally speaking, I tell tag members, anybody just come to the pavilion because our group is typically located in the center. Um, and I will find, I will find things for you to do and places to congregate because we're also going to be have Taylor bringing in groups of end user companies as possible. So it's like, who's into storage. And then you're, you're kind of hanging out in the little loungy area and then I'll grab you, you know, uh, that, that, that's the kind of thing that we're, uh, hoping to do. Good, good. So, George, I think that's very helpful because uh, we'll definitely at least swing by this time and then plan better for London. 
Yeah, and the ambassadors will be heavily involved this time around. Awesome. Uh, from awesome. now on, each KubeCon, we're going to amp up the activities that we have in the pavilion. Cool. I think that's Very cool. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, in in previous KubeCons, the the pavilion was a little was a little bit of a of a quieter space. So uh, I'm, I'd be glad to see that. Uh, I can be hyper literal. So if anyone's curious, uh, I, I I thought you meant the open source project pavilion. Uh, and it turns out the pavilion is from Germany, and it's open source cardboard buildings. Uh, and there's yeah. another uh, that is not the project pavilion at Kufan. Hey, that could be an activity in the project uh, pavilion. The pavilion. Um, <laughs> Lego blocks. Um, are you talking yeah. about Lego? So, no. <laughs> so part of that uptick in engagement is we've had. Uh, I think the last time we did this last fall, uh, we said, "Hey, we're la we're launching an expert series, expert speaker series uh, in the tag," and we've done that. Uh, and below on the next page, when we get to it, we have six new talks that we've added since we since we last um, uh, spoke. Um, it, there's a table down at the bottom um, uh, on various topics, everything from uh, observability-based query languages to more end user, like how to optimize Prometheus and things like that, uh, by some by some very active uh, contributors and project maintainers. So um, that's been uh, great to see as well. Um, uh, moving on, I guess, to requests, I guess I can start. I'll either jump in whenever uh, you like. But, yeah, um, yeah, totally. Go ahead. Um, uh, actually, what do you want to start on the first one since this one was, we had talked last night. And you, you ah, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I can I can start the first request. So um, actually, um, as the TOC has been doing a lot of uh, uh, great work on, you know, kind of looking at the processes and the um, workflows that we have today, uh, and streamlining and improving uh, many of these, you know, or defining and adding clarity there. We'd love to actually learn more because I think over time, uh, one of the things that as, uh, as we have led uh, a lot of, you know, the work on the tag uh, has been that we've kind of tried to keep up with the issues, uh, you know, and what is being discussed there, but not are not really very sure about what the tools and processes are evolving to be um, that we should use, right? We often will have uh, issues that are, you know, opened up by Rian and others uh, as PMs to kind of, kind of point us to some of these tools, but it would be great to maybe have a recording of, you know, what exists at some point in time or or even invite a, you know, Bob or anyone else on the TOC to kind of uh, share some of this, uh, you know, what the expectations are for using these tools and how, um, or the tag. So that's, that's a request we're making of the TOC. Maybe, you know, a good way to share that is a, recording or just, you know, uh, uh, someone from the TOC or Bob, you know, joining in uh, to to just present. So I wonder if this would be a good topic for the offsite and at KubeCon. Yeah, totally, totally. Or if you'll be there for all of the tags to um, yes. hear all the same information. Yeah, because yeah. again, the recordings can be generally used by everybody, right? I mean, it's not the tag, uh, observability tag specifically, yeah. Matt. Yeah, so Karinic. if you wanted to do it once, we could help with post-producing and making, you know, reusable nuggets of, you know, five, 10 minute videos for tags as part of a, I think we talked about it last year in the offsite, a, kind of like a, like a, a bootstrap kit for, for new tag leaders. Karina, can you summarize the action for the TOC offsite discussion? Yes. Oh, right now? <laughs> the uh, That for the TOC offsite, it would be great for us to identify areas where we can set expectations for the tags and what is available, uh, what processes and tools are available for the tags to use, as well as expectations for the tags. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, uh, for the next one, um, we'd like to start a dialogue. We we kind of made rumblings of it in the past, but um, I'm not sure what the right venue is for that. Uh, but it, in terms of the ecosystem of the CNCF set of projects and their observability concerns, now that we're, you know, 
uh, four, four or five years in on, on tag observability and, and open telemetry has flourished uh, and many of the standards have really matured. Uh, a lot of the needs we posit, you know, of, of the community, um, uh, not just the observability community, but the, the cloud native community uh, is less around how do I do it and, and, and is more, you know, uh, uh, how you know, how, how far along am I? So for a given project in the sandbox, you know, do they have logs or metrics or just traces or, you know, uh, have they exp explored profiling yet for the various signal types? So um, we don't want to generate something in a workflow where like every project comes and presents the tag, but we would like to have some way where projects can self-declare to what level they are observable, uh, you know, yeah. what work yeah. they done uh, so that we could, you know, have something that will scale. Um, yeah. And so we'd like to have a dialogue about this. This was actually Alalia's idea originally, um, I believe, uh, for for badges or something something like that. And again, we weren't sure, given uh, the additional resourcing that's come online at the TOC and the foundation levels, you know, are there is is there help for that, or is, should we just do it and do a show and tell? Like, what's the right way for us to go do that? Um, yeah, and 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 just to Dim's point in the chat. Uh, Dims, this is exactly like the self-assessment that the tag security does, uh, except that we were thinking of a, um, uh, kind, kind of a contributor badge, kind of a graphic uh, look on the, you know, landing homepage repo or whatever to, to be able to say, hey, you know, we, as a project, uh, not only do we have these features, but you know we also have like uh, observability. We are observability friendly. We have metrics, you know, that you can use for our features, or you can observe our features with tracing, uh, traces, or with logs. Again, or all of the above, right? And and some of the foundational, uh, and it's just as you know, security would say at a high level. Uh, we have auth, we have auth support, we have, you know, end-to-end uh, uh, um, -end, uh, encryption, you know, uh, and encryption in transit, encryption at rest, you know, kind of the high level, if you will. Bob? So if, before we jump to Bob really fast, and Bob has mentioned in the chat what exactly what I was going to bring up, but I wanted to also mention that Tag Network also brought this up last time that they were not the badges, but the badges would be great to also talk about at um, during the offsite as well, the incentives, as Dems plus one. But Bob, if you want to talk about the GTRs. Or what yep. So we we added some of this in, to the GTR, which is a previously DTR, a thing that products could fill out to essentially satisfy the um, engineering principles and some of the other requirements for DD. Um, ideally, we actually want them to sort of have a document like this in their own. And a lot of the questions that came about that were based around like production readiness reviews. And one of the, you know, big things is asking like, you know, is there a, like, how does someone observe if there is a problem? Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, is there, um, I'm blanking on, on the question, but like it, it is centered, there, there are things in there that do explicitly, um, speak to like this topic. Um, so it might be if, if you are, you know, sort of want to work on a series of questions or something like that for, for yeah, or, yeah. Or, like spec, but that might be a good way to like integrate it directly into, the sort of yeah, like well, that's exactly GTR. what we are looking at, production readiness, you know, guidelines, uh, and typically from an observability standpoint, there are uh, certain, you know, requirements uh, for production readiness uh, for any component, um, you know, and any feature set. So uh, typically that, Karina. Uh, thank you. And thanks, Emily, for the time check. We do have another tag here that needs to... Um, give their update as well. Um, so quickly, I put into the chat, so what I'd recommend is reviewing the, the PR for the DTR, um, GTR process, and adding in your observability questions as you think of them right now. 
Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, we can also fold them in later and we'll have a discussion. I know the summer um, schedules didn't quite sync up, um, so we didn't get to have a more thorough observability deep dive on DTR. Um, so I would recommend that we do that as well. Um, yep. And as mentioned, Tag Network is looking into, um, I don't know, Emily, if you wanted to mention anything here as well, but Tag Network is looking into something similar to the security reviews, the assessments. So that could be something that observability looks into also um, yep. prior yep. to incentives, but Emily. I would advise any tag that is looking to create a self-assessment for projects to consider anything that is easy for them to follow up with that provides enriched information beyond their documentation mm -hmm. and does it in a concise format. Um, a lot of the tag security work that went into their self-assessment and their joint assessment was predicated on existing industry standards for conducting audits mm -hmm. and evaluating the security of technology. And I understand some domains have something similar. So just something to keep in mind, I would recommend taking a look at those templates that tag security already has and adapting them to each specific domain or subdomain of relevance for each tag if they're interested in pursuing that. Yeah, Emily, I agree. And and again, we do absolutely plan to re leverage any industry standards that are available already. But thank you, uh, Karina and Emily. Yeah, Super thanks. helpful. So uh, in the interest of time, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll accelerate here. Uh, the rest is, is, is uh, so we had a question about the next steps for open cost. Um, we could also take that. I think Ricardo has already completed yeah, the adopter already. interviews. Ricardo, is there anything else you need uh, from us? Well, because I, I, I think to... a lot of feature set in open cost has changed, um, you know, from the time that they presented to us. And uh, no, no, it's all good. Are. So all I needed was a recommendation in the okay. doc, but okay. it's not needed anymore. Oh, it does. It's all good. We have everything. Okay. Okay. I, I do have a quick question for both of you. Um, I believe you started APAC meetings. Uh, would yes. it make sense to try to add a chair or a technical lead or someone from that region as well? Uh, Ricardo, we are currently, um, as we have started this, and it's only been three months now, uh, we do want to kind of, you know, I do join in into the APAC meetings because I'm on the West Coast. Um, and and uh, the objective really is to first kind of at least have some stable members, you know, who join in regularly uh, and on board uh, some of the, some of them um, who have been very active in uh, driving, you know, the meetings and really, you know, sharing knowledge and then uh, totally uh, it would be great to have a tag chair from APAC also. So that's our objective. But Ricardo, I think we're not there yet. <laughs> we're working towards it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Matt, Alalita, is there anything else before we move to talk on time? I think that was all. We have uh, kind of called out some of the work that we have completed, but there's lots of... Uh, you know, good um, work that's actually starting to happen. Uh, and we do plan to actually work on a couple of white papers uh, this year. So that should be exciting. Yeah, and we've, we've recently started uh, twice monthly tag observability, tag observability leads meetings sort of on the off weeks uh, we meet. Uh, uh, and those are really open as well. We just started them last month. Uh, the rest sort of is a reading of a Kanban board and we can yield our time back. Um, unless there's anything specific folks would like to cover on the second page. Thank you both. And everybody, please go review um, the rest of their completed work. You've done a lot. So thank you. Yeah, Very thank much you. appreciate thank the you. update. All right, now let's move to tag runtime. Um, Ricardo and Stephen, I saw you both here. Who would like to um, take over? Yeah, I can start us off, Karina. Um, hi, uh, thanks for bringing that up, Bob. Um, yeah, so uh, you know, a lot of our health of the health of tag runtime really um, involves around reaching out to projects. Um, I think as a lot of reviews come in, sandbox, incubation, et cetera, 
uh, it, it's nicely the other way where the projects uh, reach out to us. Um, but we're always looking for for new new areas to present or to come come to meetings uh, as such. Um, and uh, so we have a couple things coming up. Um, we do have two talks uh, at KubeCon in Salt Lake, uh, the maintainer track as usual, kind of tag runtime general. And then we have a lightning talk as well. Um, the tag storage uh, did this in Paris and was super successful to kind of drive people to their uh, regular maintainer track talk by doing the, the quick lightning talk, which happens uh, as part of the project talks on the first day. Um, so we thought we'd try that. Um, I'll, I'll be presenting there for that um, to kind of drive interest towards uh, our general runtime um, talk. Uh, and then speaking of Project Pavilion, we do have a tag runtime kiosk uh, reserved. Uh, the, the WASM working group in particular was interested in using uh, that space there. So we set that up, uh, Ricardo set that up. Um, so it's certainly at least the, the WASM folks uh, will be using some, some time there. Uh, and then we actually have uh, a couple other of our tech leads organized uh, an APAC meeting. So typically tag runtime is like 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, which is really bad for uh, APAC folks. Um, so they have a separate uh, separate time zone uh, that they can get together with uh, interested folks um, to, to talk about various things there. We still handle the majority of the general business in the, the regular slot. Uh, so as far as contributor activity, um, uh, I don't know if you want to start us off with some of the AI stuff, uh, Ricardo. Yeah, so the Cloud Native AI Working Group has been pretty active. We continue to grow the number of users in our Slack channel. Uh, so there's uh, interest in the different um, parts of the machine learning lifecycle uh, and how to use cloud native to enable those um, that mean, meaning like data preparation uh, storing the features of the models uh, training the models uh, serving the models and and also observability of the machine learning uh, pipeline uh, end to end uh, whether it is the output of the models or the of the infrastructure that that is used to run the, uh, all the the steps of the ML ops uh, life cycle. Uh, so that yeah, and I think um, there's a bunch of initiatives also in that working group. Uh, I think they're described at the bottom. Uh, there's um, ongoing uh, scheduling challenges white paper. There's also an conversations about cloud native AI security white paper. And so that's also in progress. Um, and we're also working with the tag environmental sustainability uh, to publish um, a, a sustainability AI white paper. So those the, the all of those initiatives going on at the same time. Um, and additionally, from the AI perspective, I mean, I think uh, Stephen can talk about some of the other projects, but uh, some of the interesting projects that that are um, or that we have engaged with are in the AI space are Kubray and Kato. So Kubray, uh, it's a um, way to run Ray on Kubernetes. If you're familiar with Ray's um, uh, framework distributed system that allows you to run training jobs, uh, scoring jobs, and batch inference. And I believe it also allows you to, to run inference for for ML models. Uh, and Kato is a project that uh, enables users to run containers or models as, as containers and on top of Kubernetes and a project backed by Microsoft. Uh, we also engage fees, but uh, we we still haven't gotten um, gotten um, a lot of feedback from their maintainers yet in, in terms of when they want to present. But fees is also another project in the ML 
lifecycle as a feature store to train machine learning models. I think that's it for the for the AI AI type of updates. But the, any questions from anyone? Just want to quickly call out. Thank you again for the sandbox reviews that are being done by Tag Runtime. They really help, including the AI projects. Yeah. So we we uh, actually completed the um, sandbox review for. Spin cube and cube and sorry, spin cube and spin. Uh, so uh, those projects can go hand in hand. Uh, so spin is a project that allows you to deploy web assembly applications, cloud environments, and spin cube is a way to use Kubernetes or or to plug in with Kubernetes using the same spin project. And the other sandbox read that we completed was Kato. It's the project that I just mentioned that allows you to run containers or models as containers. Ricardo, I have a question. So um, the scheduling workloads white paper is like a timeline for that. How is that going? That has been going for quite some time, right? Yeah, it's been going for quite some time. So going, uh, a few iterations, I think, um, will converge on KubeCon or, or right before KubeCon, so. Yeah, so uh, some other some other updates from uh, as far as contributor activity goes, uh, the WASM working group is also very active. Um, uh, yeah, uh, and they've provided some updates for uh, support that they have added to uh, some tooling for um, the, the OCI support. Um, this is up in the contributor activity section, Bob, if you don't mind. Sorry, I was, I was scrolling around looking for it, but I didn't scroll up high enough. No, no worries. Sorry, just, just jumping back. Uh, we can jump around. It's fine. Um, but things like adding tools, uh, support to things like run WASI uh, for that, that OCI guidance, um, as well as... Uh, Kind of pushing towards standardization for WASI again. Um, and there's some links in there that the working group has provided um, uh, for their work with uh, with those other communities. And then I, I did want to call out uh, the, the runtime meeting attendance is really kind of topic based as far as who's attending. We had did have 21 people the other day for the Meshery uh, presentation, which was uh, probably, I don't know if that was a record, but um, it does tend to typically be just the presenters and us, but that was nice to see a bunch of community interaction there as far as the main uh, runtime meeting goes. I think the, the working groups generally are pretty well attended as well, at least um, AI and WASM and the special purpose OS one as well is fairly active. Um, so no, uh, I, I guess any final questions on that? Uh, we have no requests at this time. We do want a shout out for the white paper template that certainly the AI working group uh, white paper is, is looking at um, using that, that template most recently. So uh, thank you for the help there. A request back to the tag because you were very involved in DTR, um, both of you. Yeah. If you could go ahead and take a review of the the DTR PR that is back in chat. That would be great. Absolutely, we'll, we'll do Put it on the list. Sure. Thank you both. Yep. Are there any other questions for Tag Runtime at this time? Kathy, it looks like you came off mute. Yeah, uh, I have a question. You, you mentioned the work, the, the Western work group. Uh, I did support for the um, OCI Western guide, guidance and then some standardizations. Uh, is it like new API design so for that or a new spec or something like that? Uh, it's a good question. I, yeah, I think it's um, it, it's something new. It's not a, it's, you know, I believe it's um, the community might be asking for some clarifications on, on what the OCI WASM means. And then uh, the working group uh, leads actually took on this um, uh, creating 
a, a, a something that can help uh, you know answer some of those questions. So the the uh, the WASI spec has certainly been around. I think the OCI WASM guidance is really around the artifact format as well, um, for for supporting like a, the image spec for WASM directly. Um, so the the link in there is is probably the best uh, information about that artifact layout. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, just I guess real briefly, um, you know, other uh, Ricardo mentioned some projects. We do have uh, the the completed the the Yuki sandbox presentation as well, which is actually a container runtime written in Rust. Uh, which is really interesting. So it it's like a run C or C run equivalent. So it can plug directly as a backend into things like container D. Um, and that's coming up for sandbox next week. Um, and then again, just uh, mentioned the, the meshery uh, incubation presentation as well as um, the the Cubray uh, was interested in in pursuing incubation, so came to us and and um, you know, we advise them on kind of next steps there. So they're going to uh, continue down that path um, as well as the, uh, there's Cubray and then Ray, right? So we we uh, mention and advise that perhaps uh, bringing Ray along uh, as the core and not just the upper upper wrapper, um, that those could be done sort of like a spin cube spin situation. Uh, and then WASM Cloud is is uh, engaged with the WASM Working Group as well for their incubation work there. Uh, so they're with, with the Working Group directly. And then uh, just lastly, the the DTR reviews for Yuki and Kaito for next week. Uh, those are in uh, the issues as of today. We just uploaded Yuki today. So. Thank you very much for that. And we have three minutes left. Are there any final questions for tag runtime before we do a quick? Uh... Okay, thank you both very, very much, Ricardo and Stephen. Thank you. Great update. You. And we look forward to the next one. Um, quickly, because we have a number of tag members here, want to ask Bob to give a shout out for the Taggy Awards. Yeah, just as a general reminder, the award nominations are open right now. Uh, they are open till the third. Uh, I'm going to be sending a reminder out this afternoon. Uh, but if you have anyone you want to nominate, now's the time to do it. Links um, can be found on like the TOC um, board or TNC, TOC mailing list. There we go. Um, and it was sent out to like several other places. Um, can you make sure that it may already be there, but if it's in the either the TOC or the tag TOC channels, um, so people can look there as well. Some people don't keep up on the mailing list as much. Yeah, as I'll well. I'll drop links to uh to everything later. When I send Thank out the you. reminder. Okay. All right, and final asks are to look at again the DTR. There's also other PRs that could use some tag reviews in the TOC repo. Uh, there's the governance remediation. Thank you. Um, Bob kindly put the links into the agenda. All right. If there are any final ones, otherwise we will see you in two weeks. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Karina. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Bye.